Oye, me amo. Relax, relax. Ah! 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 Welcome back to another sobering story with me, DJ Petrovsky. So I used to go to these smart recovery group meetings. I still check in periodically, but I don't need them as much as I used to when I was first getting sober. But they're an amazing group. It's kind of like an alternative to Alcoholics Anonymous. The thing I like most about the group is it's self-management and recovery training is what SMART stands for. And I'm a huge advocate that you alone are in charge and can heal your own addictions. And so I really wanted to follow a path and join a group that supported that mentality. And SMART Recovery is it. Let me tell you guys, if you haven't heard about it, I highly recommend it. It's one of the best groups that I think can possibly be out there for recovery, addiction, in any sort of facet, no matter what you're struggling with. And I just didn't really vibe with the Alcoholics Anonymous path with the whole 12 steps, the higher power thing. It just wasn't for me. No, no disrespect to AA. It's just not my bag, baby. So I started going to these smart recovery groups and completely changed my whole perspective on it. It's like a little family. I still, like I said, I go check in periodically just to see how everybody's doing. I should probably do that pretty soon. But there used to be this guy named Todd who would come to the meetings, and he was an older guy, really, really successful guy. He's part owner in a major coffee company that you, I guarantee you've seen on the shelves before. Truly just a successful human being, and to see that he struggles with alcoholism in the same ways that I do. Todd always had such wisdom and grace behind what he said, and he is just such, I had so much respect for the guy. The one thing that he would always say, his biggest trigger is when he is on top, when he's feeling good, when things are going great, he has to be extra vigilant. And he's like, that's my number one trigger. When things are going great, I know that rock bottom could be just on the other side. And initially, I didn't really understand that. But the more I thought about it, and the more I got into recovery, I totally get what he means. And the same is true for our story today. The young lady in our story, her name's Macy Marie Lathers, beautiful social media influencer and model had everything going for her. She was truly on the rise. She was on the up from everything I saw. This girl was on the up. She just moved to a new city. She was starting to take off with her modeling and her influence her career. By all accounts, she was on the rise. This girl was going to be somebody and she was doing nothing but working towards this goal for the last, you know, f five, six plus years. For her to finally get to this point, it must have been so exciting. She must have been feeling completely on top of the world. She must have been feeling like she had nothing to worry about. She, She's winning right now. Life is great. I'm finally getting where I want to go. But just like Todd always says, sometimes rock bottom is just on the other side of that hill. So when things are going great, You've got to be extra vigilant. And unfortunately for Macy, she wasn't. Oh my God. Mm. Let me show you what I got. Mm. This beat is still so hot. Mm. Oh my God. If you haven't joined me before, we talk about substance abuse and the crimes that it leaves behind. And if you uh, missed last week, we talked about Wade Wilson last week and very similar phenomenon with Wade Wilson where he's now accused of these heinous crimes. He's all over the news, all over the media, and people see his face all over the place. And of course, Wade Wilson's a good looking dude, even with the crazy tattoos all over his face. And so there's people, females mostly, but there's tons of people that are just flocking to him, obsessed with him and have no regard for the fact that he is a you know, double unaliver, but they are just in love with the, the outer beauty, the outer shell of this person. In today's story, the same I'd say is true for Macy Marie Lathers. She's a super gorgeous, I would say supermodel status in influencer, and she has an amazing following online. It's crazy how that kind of fame instantly hits, even though it's not necessarily fame. You're more being, you're accused of a heinous crime. You're being plastered all over the news media because of something awful that you did. And yet people still come and want to follow and want to, I don't know, like show love for this person. So it's such a weird phenomenon, but I guess I can understand it. Like people are so far removed from the situation that they can't truly comprehend that this person is capable of this in reality. Like to them, it's just like, it's almost like a movie, you know, it's something they saw on, on the TV. So I don't know, I'm just always bewildered by that effect. And I'm not going to lie and say that I don't think that Macy's absolutely drop dead gorgeous. But I also know that I'm not going to start writing her in prison. You know what I mean? I'm not going to try and start 
a relationship with this girl in prison because I saw her on the news and I think she's hot and blah, blah, blah. It just seems so strange to me that that's a thing, but it is. It's a thing. And so kind of just moving forward with the case, let's jump right into what actually happened with this story. All right. So it's August 10th, 2024, just about a month and a half ago from me recording this. And it's a pretty normal, beautiful blue sky day in Miami, Florida, you know, always is down there. And some people are going into work because it's a Saturday. But for the most part, not many people are cruising out at this time in the morning. It's about 6.45 a.m. It's really a pretty quiet morning in Miami, Florida. We've got a few people actually driving into work. And we've got Abraham Ismail. We've got his fiance, Juanita Hernandez. And then they've got their friend in the back seat. His name's Jesus Rubio. And they're all friends. They all work together. They're just carpooling, trying to save the planet, you know. And so they're cruising into work in a little gray Suzuki. And as they're cruising in, they're cruising down uh, Northeast 8th Street. And out of nowhere, a white Mercedes sedan comes blowing through the red light at North Miami Avenue. Abraham has the green. He has the right of way. So they're cruising through this intersection. But that white Mercedes sedan smashes into the side of a black Range Rover, which then smashes into the side of Jesus, Juanita, and Abraham's little Suzuki car, completely smashing both cars really but completely like destroying this little suzuki car and i mean the mercedes sedan those are bigger sedans it's a really long pretty heavy sedan for a car anyways it's pretty heavy so between the two hits this poor little suzuki car just got crumpled unfortunately jesus in the back seat was killed on impact he was smushed in the back of the car and he actually had to be pulled using jaws of life out of the car just to get his body out of there. The other two, Juanita and Abraham, were both in pretty rough shape. Juanita was rushed to the hospital with Abraham as quickly as they possibly could get him out of that crunched car. The person in the black Range Rover had some minor injuries, but they were not nearly as hurt as Abraham and Juanita were. So they rushed everybody to the hospital. And while they're trying to figure out what caused all of this, they're trying to figure out what happened to the driver in the white Mercedes. Like, where did they go? They just disappeared. There's nobody in the car. Number one, they want to make sure that this person in the white Mercedes is okay because they just got into a serious accident. Whether or not it was their fault or not, it doesn't matter. They want to make sure they're okay. And so they're looking for this driver. Now, unbeknownst to everybody, what actually happened to this driver is that this young lady got out of the car, and then we see this video here where she's actually walking down, it looks like she's walking down North Miami Avenue, um, and then she comes across this group of people that looks like they're exercising or running or something, and then she tries to kind of like blend in and move back in with them and heads back towards where the crash is. And I'm not sure exactly because we don't have any video footage from here, but all witness accounts say that they witnessed her come back, kind of observe the accident and then try and get away from the accident. And if it weren't for innocent bystanders that saw everything kind of going on, they actually grabbed her and like held her at the scene until police were able to arrive. Now, when they did grab her, she was about a block away from the crash. So it, it's clear that she was trying to leave the scene. And after seeing the video of her going back to the scene, we know that she probably went back, realized how bad everything was, and then was like, I got to get out of here. So we see her, she's about a block away. And then I've got this video here to just give you kind of a, uh, an idea of the state of mind that she was in when she was apprehended by police and right after all of this happened. And let me just give you a quick reminder that this is still at 6.45 in the morning. Ma'am. Time to left. She's what? Hey, 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 chill out, chill out. Relax. Chill out. Relax. Relax. Uh, Miami at 8, Miami 8 on the south, uh, one corner, black shirt, blue jeans. Just stay like that. Relax, stay on your left because you're going up. Stay like that. Look that way. Ma'am, can you stay over there looking that way? 
Yeah. No, it's going to be sideways, brother. Oye, me amo. Relax, relax. Ah! I think you were involved in the crash. She probably won't be able to walk. Does anything hurt you? Who who had heard the thing? Yeah, yeah, more. The other car, I think one is. My mole, my mole. What? Ma'am, what car are you driving? This is it? My name That's is Mercedes. Mercedes. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. I'm from the future. Awesome, amazing. I'm Chris Levon. Are you on drugs? What do you want? Oh, wow. 4514. 4514. Can I get her a shot? I mean, the female that we have detained, we're going to vice fire rescue. She just told us, she just told us now she's on two seats. So, uh, drug. She's uh, she's gonna be one of the vehicles that got into a collision. She's claiming she's on two seats. It's unrelated. Yeah, no, it's related. They had her detained. She's with the white Mercedes. They got into an accident. She had a neck pain. Okay, she had a neck pain. She okay, walked the whole from yeah. She's trying to leave the scene. Oh, she's coming. Oh, she's coming. Okay. All right, all right. All right, we'll set her up. We're going to assess her. Wait, worry. Let me try to make sure she's not like a trauma alert. Perfect. Okay. Ma'am, ma'am. Relax. 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 She, okay, she's on uh, two seat, so she's right now. She's like, oh, I'm from the future. Okay, hold on, man. We'll get her there. Yeah. Let me just, okay. Hey, 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 hey. They crashed and she tried to leave the scene. So. Alright, then I'm just gonna need an officer to come with us. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. No problem. Aliens. They're coming. They're coming, they're coming. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Aliens are coming. Aliens are coming. Aliens are coming. Aliens are coming. Okay, okay, okay. So she's probably wasted or she's probably high on something, right? Yep. You would be correct. And I don't know if um, she says it very explicitly in the video, but they ask her what she was on and she says, 2C. And I was like, huh, what? And the video that got me into this case was titled something about pink cocaine. And I pride myself on having done many, many different types of substances in my past. I have tried almost everything that there is to try outside of certain things you have to like travel to South America to do and things like that. But besides that, I've tried a lot of stuff. So when I heard pink cocaine, I was like, huh? So I had to figure this, I had to, I had to research, I had to see what was going on here. Number one, I'll just say substance marketers, they're the worst. They don't, I mean, I guess they're, it's a good way to market because, you know, cocaine's a hell of a drug. It's very popular, but it's probably the biggest false advertisement there is because after doing some research into what is this substance, it's not even cocaine most of the time. Usually there can be cocaine in there, but it's typically MDMA and ketamine mixed together. And then they dye it pink just to make it look pretty and fun. And then sometimes they even spray it with something that smells like strawberries so that it smells good too. Like, tell me you're not marketing to girls. Come on. There's one thing that me and my buddies have always said throughout our um, time using substances and partying. And if you choose to mix ketamine and dry driving a car, we call that vehicular manslaughter, 100%, because there's no reason or way that you can even physically drive a car when you're super high on ketamine or falling into a K-hole. It's crazy for me to think about this, but regardless, our, our young lady here, she says that she's high on this pink cocaine stuff, and it's called 2C, and I, I know what you're thinking, like 2 and then the letter C. Yes, that is it because it comes from a subset of substances known as the 2C substances. And these substances are all very similar in their chemical makeup to like real substances like MDMA and other, I don't know, there's a bunch of different ones. But 
they're all very similar in their chemical compounds. So they actually give very similar effects. But because they're slightly different, they're not technically illegal. So they're synthetic designer substances that are now considered legal. Um, it sounds like that's similar to what this this pink cocaine stuff is but pink cocaine really is just a mixture of mdma which is a real schedule one narcotic and ketamine which is lately been become more popular with you know a, a treatment for depression and anxiety and stuff like that but when it's used recreationally then that's a whole different ball game but those two mixed together um that's what makes pink cocaine. Now, I hadn't heard of pink cocaine one time in my entire life. I've now heard of it twice in the same week, which I think is crazy. The other experience with pink cocaine that I've heard of is with Diddy. Apparently, Diddy had his assistants keeping a healthy stock of his substance of choice, which happened to be, you guessed it, pink cocaine. Based on all the things I've read and heard about Diddy, it sounds like something that he would do, especially the whole strawberry pink thing. Like, that sounds like Diddy. And all right, guys, quote me now as being the first person to say this, but I think that maybe Macy, with her new social status, might have been at one of them crazy Diddy freak-off parties. I'm just saying. Diddy lived in Miami. They've already linked a ton of pink cocaine back to Diddy. He had crazy parties. She's a social media model. She's involved with really fancy, wealthy people in that area. Hey, the math is mathin', I'm just saying. So, quote DJ Petrovsky as being the first to say that maybe Macy was linked to the Diddy parties. Once the case starts unfolding, then we'll find out. I'm just saying, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about my theory here because I think I might be onto something. I really think I'm onto something here, guys. And if you know something about it or you have more information about that, drop a comment. Let me know. Let's talk about it. So knowing what we know now about this pink cocaine 2C stuff, we can likely assume that if it is heavily like ketamine based mixed with MDMA, which can also pr cause hallucinations if you take it in enough in a high enough dose, then we can safely assume that poor Macy was out of her mind high on some substances, probably like at least playing with the idea of a K-hole, but if not fully immersed in one. And on top of everything else, somehow she found a way to get behind the wheel of a car. And that to me is the scariest part because, and I wanted to just stop real quick and say this, because if you guys are friends with people who at the end of the night choose to leave completely obliterated either on substances or alcohol you're not a good friend and you're not a good person for letting them go out and possibly harm themselves or harm others because it could end super tragically it doesn't take much to let somebody sleep on your couch for a few hours and have them wake up or just call them an uber ride and tell them to pay you back tomorrow or whatever like it's not that big of a deal and i'm I'm not even the, I'm a big hypocrite because I drove everywhere all the time when I was not supposed to be driving in a terrible state of mind. However, that's what led me to where I'm at today, where I'm now choosing to be sober because, well, I was fucking up. But if you're doing that and you're letting somebody leave and they're in that crazy of a state of mind, that's not a good friend. Now, I can't say one way or the other that there was for sure people that let her go and do this wherever she was, but clearly it's 6.45 a.m. and she is not doing anything productive at this time of day, taking these substances. So likely she's coming home from a really late night that she had out with friends or other people, and likely she's still high on whatever she was on the night before, but they did also find some of the same stuff in her car. So it's it's also possible that she was just up early and just using these substances early in the morning as well. We'll never truly know what was going through her mind or what truly happened until some more of the discovery and the details come out. That's my like kind of conjecture about everything just based on like the timeline of it, of everything that's what it seems like happened to me now like all accidents they can pull data from the cars to see like what happened just before the accident occurred and they can see from the white mercedes data that not only was macy driving 47 miles per hour in this i believe it was like a 35 mile an hour zone but then she full pressed pedal to the metal status the gas pedal down to the floor accelerating 100 percent and the car reached a speed of 78 miles an hour before smashing into the other car so like what the fuck <laughs> maybe she thought she was hitting the brake and she hit the gas i just realized that man she must have been really high <laughs> 
Whoa. But she smashed into that little Suzuki and that Range Rover at 80 miles per hour. And be mindful, they were traveling this direction. She was traveling this direction. So, I mean, they're colliding. They're also moving at about, you know, 35 miles an hour. Bam, 80 and 40. I don't know what the math is there. Mathematicians, help me out in the comments. Not only was she high on pink cocaine when this all happened, but she was also driving without a license. Apparently, her license had been suspended since January of 2024, and I searched as hard as I possibly could to try and figure out why her license was suspended, but I couldn't quite figure it out. So I figured, let's just go through a few reasons that could lead to your license being suspended, and then we'll get an idea of probably what kind of driver she was and why she wasn't supposed to be on the road, let alone on the road under the influence. Now, right here, it says several factors or several crimes can result in a driver losing their license. Felonies involving a vehicle. So if you transport somebody or like a bank robbery or you transport a felon in your car, then you could lose your license that way. Um, reckless driving, just excessive speeding or being reckless in general and being dangerous. That can lead to it, which she was definitely doing. Vehicular homicide, which she hasn't obviously done yet, but she did this time. DUI, which is the first thing I thought of, was like, did she get a DUI before? Like, what's going on here? Why'd she lose her license? Failure to appear. Uh, if you don't go to your traffic court violations, they will, or your court date for it, then they will take your license. Failing to pay child support. I did not know they could take your license for that. Drag racing, speed contests. But these are all things that could lead to you losing your license. What do I think she did? I think it could have been either a combination of her having multiple traffic violations that she didn't attend to so they took her license or I think that she had some sort of like really reckless driving incident where she got her license taken possibly a DUI but a DUI would have shown up in my record search that I was making and I didn't see any records for any former arrests so I really don't know but I tried to find it for you guys I tried really hard now in terms of the charges that she was charged with for this crime I tried to figure out maybe I could see like what the charges were in this case might give me a clue as to what her previous charges were for the suspension. Still couldn't find anything, although none of the driving while impaired stuff says first offense, and usually they do if it's your first offense. So it could possibly be a, a previous driving under the influence situation, but I'm not really sure at this point. But some of the charges that she was hit with is, um, let's see, DWOL, DWLS, so driving while operating or driving while over the legal limit, I guess. I'm not really sure what the DWOL is. DWLS is driving while license is suspended. And obviously there's three counts of that because it resulted in injury or death. Um, she injured multiple people and unalived two people. The next thing we see here is leaving the scene of a crash resulting in death. Another felony charge. We've got two counts of vehicular homicide, reckless driving, DUI manslaughter, uh, another DUI manslaughter failed to aid since she left the scene. She failed to aid anybody there. It would look good if you tried to help the people that you just hit. DUI uh, injury to another person, bodily injury, driving without a license causing serious injury, leaving the scene of a crash causing death, leaving the scene of a crash causing serious bodily injury, yet again driving without a license causing serious bodily injury. And let's see, leaving the scene of a crash, serious bodily injury. And I think we got a couple more here. So, I mean, they are throwing the book at her for this one. That's for sure. She has been slapped with tons of charges and driving without a license thing certainly doesn't help the equation. Also, how'd you get this Merce this nice Mercedes if you didn't have a license? Like, was this even her car? No, there's no any any sort of information on whether or not this was actually her car or not. Sounds like it was, but... Not sure how she got it. So, I mean, if you find yourself in a similar situation, I pray that you don't, but at least render aid to the people that you just hit because that'll at least look better for you than if you just take off and try and pretend like nothing happened and get away with it. Definitely a better option. Now, unfortunately, we already lost Jesus in the back seat, but the other three people that were taken to the hospital, only two of them ended up surviving, and that would be Juanita, Abraham's fiance. And then the unnamed uh, mystery person from the Black Range Rover, who they only had minor injuries, they ended up surviving. But Abraham unfortunately died from his injuries while in the hospital. So we've got two unalivings from one poor decision, and we've got a girl who is completely out of her mind, and she's claiming that she's from the future and that her name is Mercedes, and she's also claiming that she's got a crystal ball and like all this wild stuff, you know? 
she's obviously messed up. Even more than that, she knows she messed up because even though you're that messed up in your mind, she clearly walked back to the crime scene. She walked away from it. She was making the decision to get out of there. So she had some concept of what was going on. She couldn't have been completely out of her mind. People were trying to, you know, hold her down at the scene and keep her from getting away. So maybe that's how her shirt came off. But somehow it comes off in between the video that we see and then the video we see again with her on the ground. Either that or she just took it off and is trying to act more crazy than she actually was. We'll, we'll never really know what was going through her mind. But with two people, unfortunately, not making it through this tragic accident, obviously she's high on something. They decide they're going to transport her as well down to a uh, hospital and figure out if she has any injuries. And then they're also going to do a toxicology report on her to figure out what is this girl on. On top of that, they also wanted to bring an officer with because obviously she's going to be facing some some charges and some jail time and some some music so so to speak now outside of her mental state i think we can assume that macy was just fine because she was walking away from the accident just fine she seems like she was un uninjured so that's a good thing for her i'm glad that she was uninjured but before we get into all of that i wanted to kind of go back and talk about how this young lady was truly a star on the rise like she had so much promise she was moving up like everything in her trajectory was up 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 until today Macy Marie Lathers was born on June 19th, 1996, so that would make her a Gemini. And unfortunately for her, that's one of the most common um, unalivers astrological signs. So, I mean, maybe that was a little foreboding, but I don't know. I don't know a lot about Gemini. Sorry if you're a Gemini. Lathers was from Fort Plain, New York, which is fairly close to Albany. Um, I'm not familiar with New York. I've never been there, but where she was from seems like a smaller town, not not like a big, big, big city, like, uh, you know, big New York City. So a pretty quaint little area. Seems like she was really close with her family. Um, her dad's name is Shane and her mom's name is Marla. And then she also has a younger brother. I think he's about 15 years younger. And his name is Madden, which I think is really cool. Seemed like a really close family. Looks like they live by the water. And her dad is, from all the pictures I saw, which was a lot, he's the ultimate fisherman. And it seems like he passed that trade down to Madden as well, because Madden is just as crazy catching all these fish. Like, between the two of them, I probably saw like 100 fish, just amazingly massive, huge, beautiful fish that they pulled out of the water. And so I know it's a sport. I know some fishermen friends. It's such a cool like skill to be able to do because I don't have that skill. Macy just seems like she has a really wholesome American family. Um, she went to a pretty wholesome high school. She played soccer through junior high and through high school. Not only does Macy's family seem, you know, fairly normal, fairly middle, upper middle class, but they also seem like they love meeting famous people. They love going to see shows, a lot of mixed martial arts events. They love going to music shows concerts things like that it just seems like they're always out meeting famous people they've got tons of pictures with like Mike Tyson Shaq I don't even know tons of other dudes I don't even recognize but just famous people and they're getting signatures so like I can understand why Macy started to take the trajectory that she did I think that she was so starstruck when she was younger by all this fame that she was so close to all the time that it gave her this like insatiable craving to want that same fame she wanted that same exact like she wanted that same exact lifestyle really but macy ended up gra graduating from fort plain high school then she moved on from there it looks like she played soccer for herkimer community college which is like a university of U new york state school affiliate and it looks like she just went there for a couple of years get some college experience get some classes under her belt maybe until she figured out what she wanted to do and then she was also still playing soccer for them as well, which is awesome. I couldn't do that. I couldn't play sports and go to school, especially college. Like, I just couldn't manage my time that well then. When would you party? Then after a couple of years at Herkimer College, she transfers to the Un University of Albany. And she is going to be a, a business administrations major, which uh, I think is a great move. It's uh, If you're trying to get into business, if you're trying to do anything where you want to be an entrepreneur or if you want to do anything that makes good big money, then it makes sense to have business classes and business acumen under your belt. That's, I don't know, that's all speculation. But regardless, it sounds like she had chosen a major and she was not only doing well in school, she was getting great grades. She was getting A's and B's. She had about a 3.6 GPA and she was also on the dean's list. So she's a very well recognized student at the school and sounds like she's keeping up with her grade. She's very involved. I don't think she was playing sports for the University of Albany though. 
Um, it looks like she was just studying, and then she ends up graduating in 2021, which is uh, where we see this awesome graduation picture. She looks super excited. Things are just going great for her. She's got a degree under her belt now. She is absolutely stunningly gorgeous, and she has all these bright future plans. One of the things I found that I really liked on her Facebook page was that she talked a lot about manifestation and kind of like, you know, visualizing and dreaming your real life into reality. And I, I love seeing that. I'm, I'm big on man manifestation, especially with my sober journey. That's one of the things I've been trying to get better at now that I'm not so focused on using substances all the time. I'm trying to get better about manifesting my reality and manifesting the things I want in life and manifesting a better future for myself and my family. And so seeing all that, I was like, yeah, hell yes, I love that. You go, girl. And not only that, but I started to see a trend where things were starting to piece together for her and things were starting to slowly build on top of uh, on top of each other. And she was starting to like see results with what she was trying to do. And it wasn't really until she moved down to Miami from New York that she really started to see anything take off. And I think she made a smart move there. She wants to get this fame. She wants a lavish lifestyle and she's obviously very pretty. So I think she was wanting to do something with her modeling and that is apparent because she starts this Instagram page. She labels herself as an entrepreneur around this time on her Facebook page, and she starts posting tons and tons of glamorous shots of her. And then not only that, but now she's moved down to Miami, so that's going to open up tons of opportunities for her. Some of those opportunities she lands is not only some modeling gigs. Uh, I read on her Facebook that she was an extra in a movie, um, and so there's a picture of her being an extra in a movie down there, or maybe it's a music video, I can't remember. But she's an extra anyways, which isn't huge, but that's how you start. You know, you start getting involved as an extra, and then you start getting involved as a, like, not main cast member, but like a side cast member. And then, you know, it just builds on it. So you have to get your foot in the door somewhere, and it sounds like she was doing that. And then on top of that, she was also working as a ring girl for some sort of uh, boxing or MMA fighting uh, ring. And I thought that was really cool because honestly, she is pretty. She could do uh, the whole boxing fighting ring girl thing where she's holding up the signs and walking around. And she's uh, one of the ring girls where she walks in with the fighters as well. So I don't know. It just seems cool, especially because in her past, she would go see MMA fights all the time with her family. So it just seemed kind of fitting. It seemed like she's putting her passions all together and she's coming up with this new lifestyle and using it to make good money and build a life for herself. So I thought it was awesome. I thought she was really, truly on the up. And the more that we go through her photos, we'll just look at a few of them here. Like you can see she's in some with their fancy, fancy cars. She's got somewhere she's getting her whole body painted, which is really cool. People hire models to do all sorts of things. So she was probably just landing all these cool gigs and just modeling for different things and um, really starting to be able to utilize her looks as her business. And then not only that, but she amassed a huge following on her Instagram. At the time of the the crash, she had about 11,000 followers. And now I think she's at almost 15,000. So, I mean, she was already fairly popular, but she wasn't even really in the game that long, if you ask me. She'd only moved to Miami in 2022, and the crash happened in 2024. So maybe two solid years of grinding in this new this new world of hers and I think she was honestly doing really well. One of the reasons she said she wanted to move down to Miami was because she wanted to get her master's degree. And so I'm not sure if she was actually working on that or not. I don't think she was because I think when she got down there and started to realize how successful her modeling and her um, you know, social media influencing career was going, I think she realized, I want to do this instead. And with so much promise and so much success that she was seeing up until this point to me it's just so tragic that not only did she take two lives but she kind of took her own as well because I mean she's not going to be around for another 20 to 30 years and all that hard work that she put into social media modeling and influencing and all that is may not even be a thing when she gets out of prison so it's just another sad sad tragic story that exemplifies exactly how dangerous substances can be how dangerous addiction can be and I don't have any evidence to say that she was necessarily addicted but I know with that fame with that um, kind of just with that lifestyle that she was in that is a pretty common theme to have substance use mixed in and intermingled and partying and it's it's the fun party lavish lifestyle that she was living and you know substances always go hand in hand with that so whether macy had an addiction or not i'll i'll never really know i'm sure she's sober now having been in been in jail for a little while but it is safe to say that she made some pretty poor decisions that night and then that morning 
to take as much as she did of that pink cocaine stuff because that stuff, maybe she didn't even know what was in it. When they're labeling it pink cocaine, you're going to assume it's going to make you feel uppery. But ketamine and MDMA, I mean, they'll give you a little bit of an up, but honestly, they're a pretty like sedating experience. So I'm not really understanding how they can call it that. Maybe she didn't even know what she was taking. You know, 90% of the time, people don't know what's in the substances they're taking anymore. Especially with a substance like pink cocaine, you're never going to know what's actually in there. It's probably a little bit of baby laxative, a little bit of dust from the dealer's house. Like, oh, there's going to be all kinds of baby powder. Who knows, man? You're going to get all kinds of stuff in there on top of random substances that were intermingled on the table or that they just randomly choose to throw in there, let alone maybe even fentanyl. And nobody wants that in anything. Now, Macy was held initially, obviously because of the seriousness of the crime. Uh, originally, she was released on a $10,000 bond, and she was placed on house arrest where she was forbidden from driving, and then she couldn't leave her house and had to wear a little monitor bracelet. However, when she came back to court for her next hearing, which I think was on September 3rd, they hit her with another four charges on top of the 10 or more charges they already hit her with originally. And that's because of the two unalivings that happened. And so they hit her with two vehicular homicide charges. So because of that, the judge deemed that she was actually a danger to society. And she didn't think that it was fair for her to be out on house arrest. And not only that, but the families were pretty openly um, against her being out of jail with the seriousness of the crime. So the judge decided that she would reset the bond at $140,000, and she's actually not going to be released this time. It's unfortunate for her because I don't think she realized that was going to happen. I think she thought she was going to be out on bond until her initial or her actual final trial date. But unfortunately, she'll be held now in jail until her ultimate trial date and through all the ultimate proceedings, so unless she can post her $140,000. $40,000 bond, which I think you have to come up with 10% of. So it'd be like 14 grand or 1400. Man, I suck at math. But anyways, she'll likely be in jail for a while until her trial date. And she's pretty broken up about it. I can understand why. You're not a bad person, but you made some serious mistakes. And so I can imagine her beating herself up real bad on top of the fact that she unalived two people. I don't know how she's going to live with that because I know I would have a hard time living with that if it was me. But it just goes to show the seriousness of the of the substances that you guys take. Like there's all all kinds of substances popping up all the time and you can't take them too lightly, and you especially don't want to take them and get behind the wheel of a car. Sure, maybe you don't think that you're going to hurt yourself, but put other people's lives in your hands as well, because when you take that risk, you're taking that risk with other people's lives as well, not just your own. They didn't choose for you to get out of your mind high. They didn't choose that. You did. So if you want to drive yourself off a cliff or whatever, that's totally fine. I don't, I don't recommend it, but if you want to do that to yourself, then that's totally acceptable. But if you're going to go start putting other people's lives at risk, that's just not fair. Also, just to be clear, I don't recommend that you drive yourself off a cliff. I just think that you shouldn't get in the car at all. That's what I think. You can call an Uber or just sleep on the curb or just like sleep at your homie's place. Like I've done that a lot. Hopefully this story just brings a little bit of awareness to the new substances that are around. I mean, pfft. Diddy's all over this substance. I had no idea pink cocaine was a thing. Yet Diddy keeps a healthy supply of it at his house with all the baby oil he's got. So, I mean, shoot. Well, am I living under a rock? What's going on here? This stuff is out there, you guys. Just be careful if you are substance users, especially with how little we actually know about what is in the substances we're taking because of how much everything is cut and how shady everybody is and how the dealer industry is entirely money-based. So they're going to try and make more money. And to make more money, they got to give you less product. But if you're weighing it, then how are you going to give them less product? Well, you mix new stuff in there that no, you don't want in there. So you just need to be mindful of what's in your stuff, you guys. But you should practice sobriety like I do. So that makes it easy. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. But I'm not trying to push anything on you guys. But if you do need help or if you are struggling or if you know somebody's struggling, then send them my way because I'm always down to help. If you have questions, if you want to know more about the smart recovery I was talking about from the beginning, please reach out because I'm always happy to talk about recovery. It completely changed my life 180 degrees in a positive direction. And I don't have to worry about 
taking pink cocaine and unaliving two people anymore because I just don't do things like that. However, I will guarantee you this. Had I been approached by somebody with pink cocaine in the club and asked if I wanted some back in the day, then I would have said definitely yes. So I would have to know, <laughs> what is this? And either that or I'd be like, I don't know. Why is it pink? It's got to have food coloring and that's not organic. So, I mean, I'm sorry guys, but another beautiful supermodel eligible bachelorette is off the streets now because of some poor choices that she made and because of her inability to control her substance use. And so, I mean, it's a true bummer, but at the same time, hopefully she's getting the help she needs. Hopefully she's understanding the gravity of things. And hopefully um, there can be some peace and some some closure for Abraham and Jesus's families and for uh, Juanita as well because she just lost her fiance. And uh, there is a GoFundMe. I'm not sure if it's still active but there is a GoFundMe for Juanita. I'll try and throw it in the in the comments or in the uh, description down below. So if you guys want to donate to Juanita, they have a 16-year-old son who is left without a dad. And Juanita being so badly injured, she's unable to work right now. So their income is basically none. And so they're just hoping for the kindness of strangers to keep them afloat and keep them going, especially having just lost two special people in their life. That's all I got for you guys today. Watch out for pink cocaine. Diddy's behind bars. You don't got to worry about watching out for Diddy no more. But um, yeah, don't make poor choices and don't let one tragic decision be your downfall like it was for Macy. But thanks for sticking around this long, you guys. If you want to check out more of my sobering stories, if you want to check out the Wade Wilson episode, I've got the Wade Wilson episode. I'll put that right here on a little card. It's like right here somewhere in this general area. And then if you want to check out any of my other sobering stories, I've got an entire playlist of all of them, but I do one every week, every Friday. And so check back in with me next Friday and this whole next week, put one of my podcasts on each day and then you'll get through all of them in a week. It'll be great. So yes. Anyways, there'll be a couple of uh, videos at the end for you as well. But besides that, my name is DJ Petrovsky. Later, sobers.